Now, in a groundbreaking experiment at the CSIR's laboratories in Pretoria, researchers have developed the world's first digital laser. The innovation is regarded as a milestone in laser technology and could spur future laser-related innovations. Earlier, I got the opportunity to catch up with Sandy Lengobo, who conducted the breakthrough experimental work and explained how this innovation can change the lives of ordinary people. In layman's term, what it means is that one can actually be able to do other things that people have been able to do in terms of lasers. People used to think of lasers as just a static uh, kind of uh, a, a laser. Basically, it becomes static in a sense that if you see a laser beam, it does not change. If you have a laser pointer and you point it at, the, at your presentation, the, the laser light that you see on, a, on your presentation is always constant. It's always a, like a dot. Now, what you've actually been able to do is actually be able to dynamically change that profile that you see of the shape of the light that you actually see uh, as a laser light, basically. You can make it uh, square if you want it. You can make it whatever shape you're interested in, basically. Sandile, what does this development mean for everyday life? Everyday life, basically, I would say most people do own lasers <laughs> without realizing it. <laughs> they just use them, like in your radio, uh, when you play your CD. We play, we watch movies, DVD players, got that. When you go to your groceries, right. you find that uh, you've got laser scanners and making life easy for people to shop quickly during um, festive season, you see long queues. They help in many ways. So basically now, what you've been able to do is actually be able to dynamically change your laser according to your application. So instead of people actually buying different lasers for different applications, now you can have actually have a single laser that can do all the application you want. And and applications or other application that will be there that will be there we, we don't know yet because it's a, it's a new technology it's it's a platform for other technology to actually um, start new 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 fields basically that's oh, what it means for you personally where do you want to see this development go i want people to use it <laughs> 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 so basically if people don't use the, the, the this discovery means that uh, well it's not but uh, from our own observation and where the, actually the future is going the future go is going towards lasers if you look at it almost every application has some sort of laser in it so in terms of uh, medical applications, we find that yes, there are laser applications now for people removing tattoos, to surgeries, to a whole lot of other things, to communication. You've got fiber cables uh, running through lasers inside, so you can increase bandwidth of, of information. So it's a, it's the scope is very huge for future usage of this technology. Talk me through, Sandile, whether this was an accidental discovery as we often hear scientists have, or was this something uh, within your radio and a target that you were chasing? I wouldn't say it was an accidental, obviously. Uh, when you go and become a scientist, uh, you want to always have an impact on the, in the science communities on your work that you do. In this case, yes, uh, I was also given an opportunity to actually work on this. Um, grateful for that, for everyone who actually participated on this work to actually get it to work. On a personal level, Sandile, uh, having developed the world's first digital laser, what does this mean for you? It's difficult to say <laughs> because uh, the attention and everything, I'm not used to that, but I think that uh, on a personal level, it makes you feel good that you actually did something that people can remember you of. <laughs> <laughs> basically. Oftentimes in South Africa we have such a difficult time proving that we have scientists and mathematicians in the country of global standard. Why have you always chosen science? Uh, from a young age I've been uh, interested in science. All my courses and every subject that I've done has always have some kind of physics in it. So it's something which has been there for quite a while.